So my name is Karwin Trees-Super. I'm a senior lecturer in medical ethics and law here at St George's University of London and have long had an interest in responsibility for health and public health policies and a certain amount of interest in the genomics too. So traditionally um, people have been regarded as being responsible for behaviours like smoking and, and, and maybe drinking too much alcohol and that kind of thing. And genetic diseases have always been seen as, if you like, the quintessential example of um, a disease, diseases that people are not responsible for in any way. So the, the comparison has always been between, say, smoking on the one hand, uh, a disease or, or a, or a behaviour that lots of people regard as, um, in to, to an extent, something that people are responsible for, and on the other hand, genetic diseases, which are things which are definitively not responsible for. But this change in uh, genomic technologies that's occurring might well move what we might call the responsibility cut. Um, and what I mean by that is that the genetic information that we're going to get, that we're already getting, is going to impact on the kinds of things we do and don't regard people as being partially responsible for. So to give one example, we might discover, um, for example, that some people have um, a genetic tendency, if you like, to addictive behaviour or they might have a genetic tendency to um, get more out of um, smoking tobacco. So they, they, might, they might find the experience more pleasurable than others for genetic reasons. Now, that may well be the case. And if we discover these kinds of um, predispositions, and if more and more people get to know about them, then our understanding of whether or not somebody... Um, is responsible for smoking or drinking is going to change. So we might end up in a situation where we actually think people are, some people are less responsible for um, their uh, behaviours, in part because of what we found out through genomic analysis. It might also, of course, work in the other direction. So there might be situations where we have previously felt that a, that a, a, a set of diseases is... Um, entirely genetic and something that's way beyond any, any individual's control. But you can imagine a scenario where an 18-year-old um, ha has their genome and exome sequenced and learns about various predispositions to um, conditions that have been traditionally associated with, with lifestyle choices. So just an example, perhaps, um, you might find an individual who, ha who um, may be predisposed to hypertension, high blood pressure. Now, if they find that out at the age of 18, it is possible, perhaps, for them to modify their lifestyles because they're aware now of the particularly high risk of, um, of, of hypertension. So, arguably, potentially, one could hold such an individual more responsible if they didn't amend their behaviour on the basis of this genetic information. So if I am told that I have a higher risk of, let's say, cardiovascular disease or, or hypertension at an early age um, because of my genetic predispositions, then arguably I, I might have more responsibility to amend my behaviour to try and avoid those, uh, that future impact.